Apparently there is a law that says that if you in public office appropriate documents and misuse them or take them elsewhere that you can no longer hold public office. So I if they actually that's... convict him for taking these documents, that might be it for him. Sorry. Well, there's what a whole it? problem with uh, possessing and taking away things marked top secret and classified. That's known as espionage. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, the fact that he, I mean, he just keeps lying and getting caught lying. And the, and the people who quote unquote work for him keep getting caught in lies over and over and over. And I don't understand at what point, at what point does this end and somebody pay a price? This time on the Plutopia podcast, our intrepid team of commentators perform a deep dive into the dark Brandon meme. We also look at dark MAGA, to woke or not to woke, that's the question. Trump in 24, Beto, Mar-a-Lago Gate, and much more. Take in the Fifth Amendment, like you see on the mob, right? You see the mob takes the Fifth Amendment. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Live from the Plutopia News Network, this is Dark Plutopia. The not ready for cable news players are here. Susie Sheeter, that's her in the fine hat. I'm Scoop mm-hmm. Sweeney, and over there, that's John Lubkowski. Are you taking the fifth, John, or maybe a court? I refuse to answer under the grounds that it might tend to incriminate me. Or incinerate you, perhaps. Or, or inseminate you. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes our uh, family rating. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off right. The one we never had. Yeah, so that's going to be fun. So what is this uh, dark Brandon thing, you guys? I mean, is it is it a way to, quote, unquote, take back the night? Is this what we're doing here? I think that's what some people feel. Other people just hate the idea. We're being just as bad as they are. Oh, I'm not going to play that game. Well, the, <laughs> yeah, the whole thing of taking back Brandon reminds me of a really, you know, uh, horrifying seg- segment of the movie Clerks 2, where the bonehead kid is going to take back this racist fl- phrase and make it his own. The phrase was porch monkey, and he said, we're going to take oh. it back. And it's, he does this diatribe, and he's like, oh, my God, someone shoot that boy. Yeah, that's <laughs> he, awful. He would fit right in with the Trumpers, though, with that kind of life. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a word that I consider to be radioactive, and that's the word woke. Woke. And uh, unfortunately, it's spreading far and wide. Now the left and the right both use the term. Yeah. Um, and... Well, I say the left and the right both use it. What's really happened is that uh, a few people who used to be on the left are being kind of pulled to the right to the center, and woke yes. as part of what's pulling them. Love. And um, that was a word that had a perfectly honorable meaning initially. It meant that you were alert to issues of social justice, basically. Wasn't it, it was a Black shut- Lives Matters. Black Lives Matter was used. I mean, it goes back farther than that, but it goes Black back Lives to Ma- Chuck Palahata. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry. I it know, was. I know. I know which one you mean. Uh, yeah. So he he's the one who apparently first used snowflake. So there's that one as well. That's that's hardcore. You know that all of a sudden people are starting to co-opt that kind of thing. Well, Snowflake and Woke are kind of related in yep. the way that they are used now. But kind of the point I was going to make is that this is a this is a thing that the right has done, uh, unfortunately, pretty effectively for yeah. some time now, is to take terms that have a perfectly decent meaning and turn them into pejoratives. They did that with the word liberal, you know, yeah. liberal is not a bad thing but if you're on the right it's like another radioactive word right right so there's lip so we just sort well. of like put up with this uh we i, I mean 
I don't know whether no, I'm on the right. right, left, up or down or whatever, but you felt like you were at the end of that barb. So we, yeah, fits. I'm kind of over. I'm kind of over on the left. I've always been a, a little bit leaning left. I'm not probably as far left as some people. I'm not, not, um, not exactly a centrist either. I don't know. I'm kind of a. I have some progressive ideas, but you know, I, I don't think. I think everybody's complicated and most people probably aren't really left or right. They're just who they are, you know, and they believe certain things, but you can get pushed, shoved hard into accepting an identity and making it your raison d'etre, you know, and that happens a lot on the right. And they take these terms and bastardize them and so forth. And then they have, memes where they turn things around <laughs> well dark brandon is the first time i can think of that i've seen the left do something similar they took the let's go brandon thing which was basically fuck you fuck joe biden and they turned it around and created this dark brandon meme that shows brandon as a powerful dark figure sinister figure and it's supposed to be kind of ironic i guess but for some time now the right has been telling us that biden is uh you know has dementia or that he is in some way not up to the task or whatever but we've been seeing him do one thing after another that's just been really like great accomplishments his it's legislative just, accomplishments are probably greater than Lyndon Johnson's. Yeah. So, but the they don't good thing about this meme that. is that it shows him as a powerful figure. And that's what I liked about it. Uh, aside from the fact that I also just thought it was kind of funny. Oh, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hilarious. I, I don't. I don't know about the red eyes that bothers me because I've seen so many Trump memes where he has red eyes. Well, and I'm sure that's where they got them from, you know, it's like just, that. I don't, I don't mean. care for the, yeah. That's also something that Homelander has. Well, I can give you a, an alternative here. I'd like uh, yellow eyes. How about I'm, yellow eyes? That's uh, I would say, you know, blue, like just crazy blue. Yeah, I would rather see the uh, Ooh, the Earth, the, the uh, whirlpool eyeballs, like uh, the, the, <laughs> someone doing the mesmerizing. Yes, scene, uh, that would be right under my too. power. <clears throat> you know, the whole I thing with woke well, that that uh, grabbed me is yeah, I, I was not really paying attention, but all that woke <laughs> reminded me of was some one of my one of my favorite lines from a blues song you know woke up this morning and my cadillac was gone fell so damn bad i threw my drink across the lawn that's <laughs> that, that's the republican blues uh. well i i actually reposted a meme the other day that said that the gop is no longer the party of reagan he's the part they're the party of the guy who shot reagan and I totally think that's dead on, pardon the pun. I don't know. That's kind of insulting to the guy who shot Reagan, though, don't you think? Yeah. Well, he what was, was his crazy. name, John Hinckley. He yeah. was just crazy. He, he was just wanted love. to he wanted he to impress Jody Foster. I mean, you don't know. we all <laughs> well not we. I'm on the fence on that one. Mm. But kind of what I was thinking there is I think some of these people are far worse than the guy who shot Reagan. He was just like a confused, screwed up guy. But uh, these people are not confused. And they're, well, some of them are. But I'm mostly they kinda, scared. They know what DeSantis. they're doing. Trump knows what he's doing. So, what do you think he's going to do? Is he going to, he's going to run? Well, he has to. Number one, if he stops, if he says he's not running, then he has to stop raising money for the run, right? And uh, he's raising tons of money this way and sticking it in his pocket. The second thing about it is that he's going to try like hell to get elected again to keep himself out of jail. It's his yeah. get out of jail free card. 
And that's so, more of an issue right now than you would uh, imagine. It's a, Today's getting bigger every day, Developments right? with uh, even Merritt Garland coming out and said, "Yeah, we want to release the uh, <laughs> uh, the." Uh, yeah, they have to because the otherwise, and the, and, uh, no one or the search warrant and <laughs> and the associated uh, wording that says what they've gone looking for and what they took away. So well, will... apparently, apparently there is a law that says that if you, in public office, appropriate documents and misuse them or take them elsewhere, that you can no longer hold public office. So I if think... they actually convict him for taking these documents, that might be it for him. Sorry. Well, but, there's a that? whole problem with uh, possessing and taking away things marked top secret and classified that's known as espionage yeah yeah i i'm uh, the fact that he i mean he just keeps lying and getting caught lying and the and the people who quote unquote work for him keep getting caught in lies over and over and over and i don't understand at what point at what point does this end and somebody pay a price well, if, if he has a large number of people who think that it's cool that he lies, especially that it's cool that he lies and gets away with it, then he's always going to be kind of okay with them. So the question is whether that's a large enough group of people to throw him real power. Uh, Do you think they this... certainly managed to in 2016. Do you think that that will be, I, I think, what do you think will happen in 2022? Are we going to lose? Are we going to win? What do you think? I feel kind of good about it. I'm almost certain that we will either win or lose. <laughs> well, gee, uh, there's, there's no tie there. Uh, I'm going to put money on that. You know, get, get, get well, you know, it, this is a good time to talk about Beto. Beto oh. just did something pretty interesting, right? motherfucker did he right he called somebody <laughs> a motherfucker <laughs> he and, sure did and everybody stood up and cheered you know it yep. used to be that if you did something like that you'd be in kind of political trouble but i actually think that that helped him man and it was know, certainly it's, it's like the problem. thing to say because that guy was being a complete and total asshole he was and he used it well he used it well but ever since Trump, all bets are off on things you can say. Yeah, I'm he, sorry. He said all sorts of trash that uh, didn't normally get said on the on the evening news or yeah. or in political rallies. Yeah, they <laughs> and then that one woman conservatives <laughs> and, uh, that has nothing to do with being a conservative. That's being who, a, a do Trumper. you remember th that woman who was saying, "Please uh, quit saying that word," and uh, my children are watching. <laughs> <laughs> and who was it she she was like i'm so i think it was klobuchar i'm sorry if you think this this is offensive to your daughters but it's can you imagine that how all the women that he said that to your president said that and so i'm gonna it was maxine waters that's who it was mm -hmm. she said no i'm gonna say this i think it's uh it's reflective quite honestly of at least my generation well, uh, we drop f bombs like it's no pro. It's just a. Uh, it's just something we do. You know, that, we we that, curse. Uh, the, you know, there's a change in our use of language. That uh, when the older, very conservative, very uh, repressed generation faded away and were replaced by idiots like us uh, <laughs> who didn't really mind saying fuck or anything else. Yeah. And uh, it, actually, it's just. Uh, part of our daily uh language it really is it's like saying yeah. like <laughs> lenny bruce helped that along lenny <laughs> bruce yeah. and yeah lenny bruce like him. lenny bruce died for our sins yeah That's true and george carlin that was another one he was big help big help but i you know i think that question about 2022 is pretty hard to answer um i feel better and, about and there it than is, I did. well there there it's a complex problem you know there are so many variables i mean they can take polls out the wazoo uh the problem with polls is that it's increasingly hard to get a good sample 
Uh, used well, to be, you, you could find people, you, you could like, go through the phone book and randomly pick people or however they did it back then. I mean, it was easier to do when people had uh, a single phone number that was findable. But I don't really understand now how they can get a, a good accurately weighted sample for a poll and be get like really reliable numbers. Right. I think that it's in, in, increasingly unreliable polling. So I don't think that we can peg a lot on the polls. And, you know, the polls are telling us, sometimes they tell us really different things. Well, and, and recall uh, uh, the uh, re response to polls back when Obama was uh, reelected, and everyone at uh, Fox News was expecting it to go one way because their polls said, "You know, our our boy is going to win." And uh, <laughs> that well, didn't they happen. didn't make that and mistake then, twice. Then in twenty sixteen, <laughs> you know, we were looking at all these polls that said, "You know, uh, you know Trump's going to lose. Trump's going to lose." Well, he <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> well, I'm looking at at a poll that says Democrats are slightly favored to win the Senate, but that Republicans are completely favored to win the, the House. Oh, no! God. There you are. Damn it! Well, if we had to win one or the other, the Senate okay. would be the one to win. Yes, but okay, okay. So let's think about this real quick. Kevin McCarthy wants to be Speaker real bad. Yep. Yeah, and he's a fine... Uh, freedom-loving individual there. Who is he going to be up against? Isn't he just a dummy for uh, Edgar Bergen? No, <laughs> wait, that was Charlie McCarthy. Well, he is a dummy, though. And that was a different Charles McCarthy, too, also. Um, okay, so no, really. What do you think? Who's he up against? I mean, as far as the GOP, do you think he has any competition for his side being nominated as a speaker oh speaker of the house oh, maybe they'll give it to matt gates somebody said they wanted it, that they were thinking about giving it to donald trump it, i don't even know how well that actually works. that's true well you don't have to be a member of the house to be the speaker of the house it turns that's... out and they did absolutely talk about giving it to trump and there are certainly some people who want to do that but oh will he they would allow actually himself? do that i don't know you keep you keep wondering why these guys don't like grow some kind of moral spine and stop fucking around you know they're not allowed they to don't. do that in in politics you can't have uh, morals anymore that's well once <laughs> you once you do that that faustian deal man and it's 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 real obvious to me that Mephistopheles was in fucking Lindsey Graham's bedroom one <laughs> night because holy yeah. shit, what a 180 that man has done and continues to do. I mean, it's just like, I don't know if you saw him on, um, he was on, a, a, he was doing the news circuit uh, the other day after the bill to block the uh, veterans, <laughs> you mm. know, and he was slumped in his chair they showed him from a really bad angle i guess he thought he was just having up here and i mean his suit was all wrinkled and kind of coming off he looked like hell he looked like utter hell i bet he's terrified about what's <coughs> coming down the pike for him well maybe he's been on a bender the whole vote on uh maybe the, uh burning pit uh legislation that that i uh, identified who the real cowards are in uh in the in republican that. uh contention i mean that's not something that's worthy of a no vote i mean you know, these are veterans who <laughs> who are dying or they're very sick i had a friend of john and i had a friend who died from agent orange and he was exposed to that same kind of thing they did the burn pits in vietnam back then so it wasn't just that it was a, it, the agent orange itself and in, in the dmz in the, in north korea they stored agent orange agent blue and agent white mm -hmm. and anyone who served in the dmz uh got instant 100 percent disability yep. and then uh it became 
like the people from Vietnam with Agent Orange, they wouldn't even recognize until like 1996 or something. And my father ended up on 100% disability. But what they didn't do, except for one group, uh, is look at the children of these men and women, very few women, but men who came home, that stuff fundamentally changed their DNA. And yeah. therefore, they passed on those birth defects to their children, i.e. me. Um, and I, we all have all the same kind of symptoms. And finally, the VA said, okay, we're going to pay out spina bifida people. And that's it. But a ton of us just have these horrible, horrible is that the source of your spinal problems it absolutely is and my reproductive wow. issues <clears throat> it's all agent orange but we can't get the the government to admit it i am so happy for these guys i hope to god their children are paying attention to this because whatever they had they were dealing with over there could have also changed their dna which they're going to pass on yeah the yeah. va has consistently resisted any kind of exploration into you know the genetic impacts of all these things that were you know uh foisted upon you know the uh, the unknowing veterans i mean they were just out there doing their job and there's all this stuff being used that uh, comes back, you know, decades later. And it's, not, on a just, ship with it's it. not just killing and uh, disabling them. It's gotten into their DNA and it's gone into their family. And yep. it's just a terrifying idea that, you know, this sort of thing is being resisted by this agency that's supposed to be helping these veterans yeah you have to like very nice that you have to like super super you know have this all this proof and these are just the veterans not the kids the kids they're just like okay we see that this one group has an issue but we don't want to hear about anything else and i belong to several groups <laughs> that are like uh, we all have i mean identical problems it's just it's it's a terrible thing and i again hope that those children are or the veterans themselves are telling their kids listen keep hold of all these records you may need them someday and get checked out for certain things that you know do do, to do a list of stuff that could be a byproduct and go get checked out if i had been checked out and done a, the correct tests i may not have had the strokes i've had you know, I, I may have been able to dodge a couple of pulmonary emboli and stuff like that. So you had strokes. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of CVAs and a co and many TIAs. Mm. Um, but the reasoning, or the well, the reason that happened is that I had menorrhagia, which is you're bleeding a lot, uh, mm -hmm. like you're on your period. And you can't stop bleeding. And I went, and they usually give you a bunch of birth control pills, which stops it. Well, it wasn't stopping. It had been over a year. And I find, and this had been going on my whole life. So it was just sort of no doctors really took it seriously. So finally, uh, I passed out and I had to go to the doctor and they put me on the birth control pills which exacerbated this blood disorder that I have. And had I taken a test, I would have known not to take birth controls. <laughs> you know, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Medical complexity. Mm -hmm. Once you're born, they just don't really care. <laughs> well, there's something to that. <clears throat> I, we could talk about, uh, there was an interesting thing that happened the other day. This is a change of subject, but it's on the abortion thing. So there were, was a woman who terminated her pregnancy with her mother's help, apparently. And uh, they got in trouble for that. Uh, it was in Indiana, I think. And uh, the apparently someone reported that they had buried a baby. And the police questioned them. And they said that the baby was stillborn. And they also mentioned to the police that they had discussed this on Facebook. So then Wait a minute. the police got a warrant 
to get their messaging from Facebook. Oh, and, and Facebook was like, okay, here we go. And the, well, of course, they, I mean, they have to because it's a legal warrant. And they it actually, it. you know, a lot of it, they made it sound like this was a horrible thing that Facebook did. I don't think they could have fought it. I don't think they could have. I mean, I, you know, if it was Trump, he would have just not done it, I guess. But this is Facebook and, and they did it. And then uh, the messages revealed that they had actually terminated the pre pre uh, pregnancy with med medication. And and then they buried the child. There was something about how maybe they child? Like, was burn it, the child first. The, the, I mean, how far along well, are they? Child. 28 weeks. How, 28 what is weeks, that? which is pretty far along, that. actually. How many months is that? uh let's see that's six months maybe. that's too yeah you're right that's too yeah. that's too late that's not you that's not an abortion anymore that is no longer abortion i'm sorry but well, miscarriages should not be the charges should not be pressed against them but if you're inducing one then at, at that at that time frame yeah i mean, I mean that, that was kind of that was my question like it sounds like what these women did was pretty bad. I don't know that they should be charged with a felony and put away, which is kind of what's happening, you know. But it was it was it was bad if the baby was still alive. There was some question in my mind whether they thought that the baby had died inside of the woman, and maybe they didn't think that they could afford to do anything about that, or maybe they just didn't think well we can't get the baby removed because of this abortion law so well, well that is a way. true thing that is an actual true thing i don't know if this was a, true but from what i've read they are forcing people mothers to, to carry, carry dead babies dead babies until their natural delivery or what the hell ever happens. yeah and that yeah, is because uh, if that is criminal it, it's an negligence there for uh, them to expect or medical malpractice for them to allow that to happen. I well, I mean, it's a that. crime if they don't allow it to happen. Yeah. But, you know, but the stuff... a, I would sue if they killed me during mm -hmm. the, I, yeah, I mean, I would have my family sue the shit out of me if they, if some kind of septic, you know, bullshit happened and dead fecal, whatever got into my system. My God, what a crime cruel thing to do to somebody and dangerous they just yeah, and, and, fuck about women well, well, kind of the point i wanted to get to here is that <clears throat> the people who passed these laws were passing them for political reasons and they didn't really think about the implications of it and so we'll make it as strict as we possibly can there's no excuse for an abortion and of course, they don't know anything about medicine. They don't know anything about women's bodies. They probably don't know anything about their own bodies. And they're passing a law that has implications that are going to be terrible for so many people. And they just don't get it. They don't, they don't care. Get it. Down yeah, we, there really scares care. them. We it's can political. expect to I mean, see those kind of things uh, happen, particularly here in Texas, you know, with these new laws that are coming well, throughout the, in the United States. It's not going to be a, a, a rare thing to see all these horrifying things happen to women who might have been able to get an abortion. But, I mean, there are many that can't, they can't afford to drive to New Mexico or And or now wherever. they're trying to make that illegal? Fuck you. You cannot tell me that I can't drive to another state to do whatever the hell I yeah, want. That, that, the law would basically have to say that if you are pregnant, you have to stay within your state. Yes. And if you don't know you're pregnant, we'll test you before you leave. What? What? Yeah, yeah, you, I don't know. you have them all fitted with uh, ankle monitors like they do. I didn't the, find out I was pregnant. Fellows. I mean... <laughs> I would just say that I didn't find out, out I was pregnant until two hours after I landed in Kansas, you know? God, Kansas. Did you land on top of a witch? 
<laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you have to, you have, that's, how do you, what are you going to do? Are you going to make women pee on a stick before they leave? Are you going to border patrol? I just, they've got these, these apps, you know, that are period tracking apps. And um, apparently the, there are certain people who have this information and they have it to sell it to people at you know at, at, at as far as i've what i what i've gleaned is people at the at the uh in the government they want to know especially those they did it to, the same thing to those young girls who got brought over in Mex from mexico those little kids who were brought in by the caravan they tracked their periods they gave huh. them they gave them uh hysterectomies what yeah I mean, if it wasn't a full hysterectomy, it was like an ablation. They Why sterilized they them. They sterilized them. Why did they do them. that? Dude, really? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, well, that's, I that's one I haven't like, How there. did they do that? How was that legal? It wasn't. But they oh. were immigrants. And they were, in, they were in our custody, but they weren't really on American soil. They weren't really, you know, that sort of thing. So... It came out. I'll 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 check it out real quick and send it to you so you can see it. Okay. But y'all and I will be appropriately outraged. I hope so. Right. But I'm so outraged about so many things now. It's it hard to be, even keep track. It would be nice to have a week past when no one was outraged. We were all just no happy campers, but uh, <laughs> I, I used well, to get political season starting. I don't think that's going to happen. What do you think is not going to happen? That we're not going to be outraged for any period of time. Okay, this is from the um, this is from the ACLU. So I'm sending it okay. to you. Uh, I guess I'll send it to you via text so you can get it. Right. Okay. All right. And when, when you say via text, as in text message, as in text message, the blue bubble. I mean the green bubble. Not Slack, but okay. Right. Sorry. Okay. I could have used Slack. Anyway, uh, I find it, 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 and it's about um, immigration detention and coerced sterilization. ICE detention story reflects a long pattern in the U.S. of coerced sterilization of marginalized populations, particularly of Black, Latinx, and Indigenous people. And then Underneath that is an entire article about the recent news, which is was in 2020, is when this happened. More than 60,000 coercive sterilizations were performed throughout the U.S. pursuant wow. to eugenics law. It says uh, in Buck versus Bell, the Supreme Court legitimized early 20th century eugenic sterilization practices yep. with Oliver Wendell Holmes' notorious declaration, three generations of imbeciles are enough. Well, there was a bit of that practice um, upon the uh, indigenous population. You know, Native American children were... Uh, when they reached uh, puberty, many of them were, uh, you know, fixed so they couldn't have kids, okay. especially the ones that were in the Catholic, uh, you know, uh, schools that were running, uh, you know, where they were being taught to not speak their language and you know, you're not Indian anymore. You're. This is the kind of stuff that, that should everyone should have known and should have been front and center because it is a clear clear red flag as to where we were going well the eugenics was at the heart of the uh the third reich i mean hitler i mean that that was one of his big plans for the final uh solution to not just the jewish problem but uh, you know any problem with was created by people that didn't agree with him yeah, Wait, and uh, you don't want to have blonde hair and blue eyes and big muscles. You mean like like Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and then Trump. This that was a really weird. I mean, not shocking at all, but huh? 
that's a weird thing to say that uh, he wanted his generals to be more like the German general. Oh, yeah. Well, what what he was saying is that the German generals were loyal to him. Yes. And, and he wanted his anything. generals to be like that. But what he didn't think of is the fact that the German generals three times tried to assassinate Hitler. Yeah, and, there were quite a few that didn't go along with uh, a yeah. lot of his orders. You know, they just tried to pretend they, they never received him. Apparently, Milley did tell him that, and his response was, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he said that no, no, no to a lot of things. That, well, no. Actually, yes, yes, yes. If I, if, when I open my eyes, it better not be there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Oliver Wendell Holmes missed an imbecile back, back uh, then, somewhere. I am so, I was so, there was just a little, ah, kind of spring in my step for a minute when I saw Stefanik's name in the toilet. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. You know, the stuff that he was ripping up and throwing in the toilet? Uh, One of yeah. the pieces of paper. So somebody took <clears throat> pictures. And one mm -hmm. of the piece of papers has her name on it. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> that one thing that kind of puzzles me is regarding all of the, the, the many documents that Trump took to Mar-a-Lago that, you know, like there were originally 15 boxes that they took back. And apparently yesterday they got 12 more. And if these documents were problematic or incriminating what kept him from just burning them you know why didn't he just set fire to them yeah, well, well, well it's been speculated that he had those as a backup for uh maybe a potential uh defense yeah because you know, there's no way of telling what it was but i think it's it dirt on people that would uh you know back up some of his uh you know things he's been saying uh and no matter how ridiculous as it was or it might have been things that he might be able to send over to uh his buddy in russia <laughs> say yeah. uh, get me out of this and i'll give you this it wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me uh, yeah, but be you know interesting to what, find out what you say though is is an interesting thing i mean why not put it on a hard drive right no that's not his style i mean well, but what I mean is the man could barely <laughs> use a telephone, uh, a cell phone, much less. This is like one of the, like, have you seen the line of duty with it's a British show? Okay. No. So no. there's this guy and he's got a brandy glass. And I mean, it's a really good show up until this part. He kills a woman after they've had brandy out of these really nice glasses one of them gets lost but he keeps the other one he won't get rid of it and it's got his fingerprints on it and it's he's just i mean the whole the rest of the show is like six episodes about him trying to hide this brandy glass and i'm like just fucking break it <laughs> you know i don't know why people do stupid shit they hang on bury it stuff. in the backyard you do know? something yeah it's just but why like why hang on to a gun if I shot somebody, not that I would. Well, yeah, I would. Trump has a, he has a history <laughs> of that kind of uh, you know, weird behavior. I mean, he didn't really, you know, from what I hear, he didn't really try to cover up all the you know, uh, shenanigans he was playing with his taxes and his uh, evaluations of the value of his properties that he used to get lower taxes. He and thought he was going to away with I mean, it. He was proud of a lot of his scams. Yeah, I didn't pay these people because stupid people to. pay taxes. You fucking moron! I thought, it was, I thought it was interesting that he's never been accused of trying to kill anybody, and that makes me think maybe he never has tried to kill anybody. And it could be that some crimes kind of scare him. You know, he's almost afraid to do it. Well, well, that his, could be. From his world, I mean, he doesn't need to kill anybody. He has a, enough influence and power to have someone do it for him. I mean, I think he kind of gets off you know, on he watching doesn't want to people get his hands crumble dirty. and 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 become nothing. I think his ego is just super pumped by that. I mean, he has 
lists of people that he wants to get revenge on. And I'm sure he sits around and just calculates and plans. I think he's, that's who he is. He's, he's, he's a psychopath. I really think he's. It's good to have a revenge list though. Well, I mean, not that I'm still, I I'm still working out how I'm going to do it. I wasn't saying know? that I didn't have one, but I'm not the president. <laughs> yeah, there are true. times when he reminds me of the <laughs> strange character from that TV series, Big, Brook, Big Bang Theory, of Sheldon, who was the genius who had a lot of really strange and unexpected explainable quirks and Trump's definitely got those the you know his germophobia and his uh inability to you know admit to any wrongdoing you know it's interesting when you say germophobia I don't know has he just hidden it really well because I have not on it I've heard about it for years and years and years but I haven't seen it I think he shakes hands with people you yeah, know? but he doesn't enjoy it. <laughs> no, I'm sure he doesn't enjoy it. And he doesn't but kiss he, any babies. Uh, oh, that, he he told him to get that baby out of there. You remember that at that rally? Somebody get that yeah. kid out of here. Yeah, yeah. Well, those babies—they're all full, full of germs. You know, you don't know where they've been. They may be Democrats. That ooh, those Democrat man, babies. Oh, man, what is up with the, the rhino hunting ads? <laughs> Dear God. I mean, they, they it is no terrifying. And then everybody's saying, "Go to war, go to war." I mean, our our fucking senators and our representatives are saying it's time for civil war they're saying the word civil war it oh, trended yeah. on twitter for two days the, the, yeah the, somebody in cincinnati attacked the or tried to attack the fbi yeah with, with an ar-15 style gun, a rifle and a nail gun and full body armor and it's like i'm still waiting to get some d details on who this goofball might have been so I don't think his body armor helped him that much. Well, he needed, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they, they, I haven't heard out how, how they took him into custody, whether he was dead or alive, but. Oh, uh, no, he, they dead. killed him. They oh, killed they him in a cornfield. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. He gave chase. That's right. That's what I, I did hear yep, that. Yep. I did hear that. Oh man. That's a, uh, well, I, I don't think that dark, I don't know how I feel about Dark, dark Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, I well, just dark, don't, I don't know. Dark Brandon is a, a, a powerful meme, right? And, I don't know. Uh, one of the things that's propped Trump up has been the belief of, of his uh, followers that he is a very powerful person. The Dark Maga. He has personal power. Dark Maga, right. I just and, don't respond to you know, the, the red problem, eyes. Well, the problem with Biden is, and this kind of drives me crazy. I had to correct one of my friends the other day for like tearing down a guy who says he's a Democrat and is going to vote for Democrats, and he's tearing down Democrats. The Republicans don't do that, man. They prop themselves up like crazy. They don't like attack guns. each other, you know, but we, they're attacking we have this... each other right now, though. Yeah. The, yeah. The well, right yeah. Now. I mean, I mean, like crazy. They are. It's the true. It's true. They're starting to do it. Yeah. If you look at the people that <clears throat> they are uh, rhinoing and going after, a lot of these are fairly distinguished and, uh, you know, intelligent, uh, fairly normal people that don't have a lot of scandals in their resume and are just, yeah, you know, they have conservative beliefs, but they're the old conservative of, you know, pro-business and, uh, you know. They're the old radical. Yeah. They're the yeah. old extremists, like yeah. fucking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they were no several libertarians, but I mean, they didn't go out and uh, do the ridiculous stuff that this new batch of yeah, this, this Republicans. Is is, Absolutely, I mean, Republicans. But so that's the thing. Okay, we're going to end up having three parties because whether or not Trump wins the GOP nomination, he's going to run as an independent. And so that's good I'm for ready us. to have a party right now. 
Hmm. Well, I think know, that's good for us, but we're going to um, have dino <laughs> hunting though, because you, you you can see it. Okay, I mean, not as widespread as the rhino, but you know, there's some people been identified as Democrats in name only. I won't say any names, but uh, we we know who they are, and they have caused Biden, Biden is one of them. Speaking <laughs> of, do you guys think people Manchin, say that about Biden? Kind of. Man, do you think Manchin and Schumer kind of did they they've been planning this for a while? Uh, no, I think they're just both. They're just all arrogant assholes. I mean, you know, some of the you know Manchin's the old school hardcore you know uh, you know Democrat uh, power guy. I mean, that's all he's into is the power that he gets from being you know the representative of his area and he protects it you know like a like a mama bear protects her cubs you know even though his cubs go with any of this him. liberal stuff god i hope he loses oh my god well i just found a, a piece this is of interest to you susie whole, okay. whole food ceo says socialists are taking over american institutions I feel like socialists are taking over. They're marching through the institutions. They're taking over education. It looks like they've taken over a lot of corporations. It looks like they've taken over the military, and it's just continuing. Wow, wow that's one thing I didn't realize about John Mackey. Well, well he you... wrote that fucking conscious capitalism book. That does, that, you know, for me, that was a big red flag. You could use those well, same words I mean, against him by just replacing socialists with uh rich entitled uh, white guys oh my god i'm too. just i saw something in the paper about him he's opening up uh cafes and wellness centers and i'm like isn't that what whole foods kind of started as are you just starting over because you can't find any other i just what a that's horrible well i, would, I mean he's he's tried to do that before I would question yeah. what he considers wellness, though. I'd, oh, <laughs> if yeah. If I wanted to keep my wellness, like I'd stay away from him. Uh, he's got that gray pallor, and he's super Yeah, he good. looks really well. Well, he's not look good. <laughs> well, he's on the fireman number two diet, I think. Engine, fire engine what? number two diet. Fire engine, engine number, two. number two. Ninja yeah. number two. <laughs> uh, yeah. but I guess I missed I don't know. When I saw, last time I saw him, he looked pretty healthy. Uh, and he I, was definitely not fat. That's upsetting, though. That uh, that's upsetting. Oh well, whatever. Do do your thing, man. I don't know that I'm. I was a little surprised to hear. I guess when when that. you know the fact he was anti-union kind of goes along along that though. That that that's kind of along the same lines, don't you think? Yeah. Was, super anti-union he closed down one of his stores because of it which i think is what's going to happen to this starbucks right up here at 45th and guadalupe yeah they're oh yeah they're down uh, you know downsizing it, it's all for business for reasons you know they, mm -hmm. they don't want to be anti anti a uh, union but that it's funny that well no, it's not funny but it's ironic that the same places all had people trying to unionize the employees that's a you know they didn't invent that that's been a common tactic in american business for <laughs> decades and decades well i think that it's i i have a feeling of course everybody's calling for a civil war and maybe it'll come i i don't know but i i feel well, like not everybody's calling for it no 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 the, the ones the ones with the guns are <laughs> Oh, for it well, yeah well let them try let them yeah, try i mean yeah, they, they probably will try it yeah not yeah. all the people with guns are on that side because uh i've read about a lot of you know civil rights groups are armed a lot of uh, uh, progressive groups are armed now because simple matter of survival if if, the other people, are, if people are coming after you with guns you mm -hmm. you might want to at least have a bulletproof vest austin black prides have had had several um uh weekends where they let you come down and they register you for the you know get you all, all the paperwork ready so you can get a gun legally and they uh then will also give you free lessons so that you can get the permit and all that stuff and they're teaching people to shoot i think it's 
wonderful. I mean, I think everyone should be <laughs> armed. If you know, if you're going to be armed, I guess I should be armed. Probably won't be, but you know, have the option to. If y'all are going, I just don't. I just don't like this whole um, rapid fire, made to kill people gun thing. I don't get that. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely not a hunting uh, rifle because. If you look at the damage that it does, I mean, you, you can't go and take that uh, that rabbit home that you shot with, that, or or that yeah. deer. You know, and what's a, a, what was like talking about? What's a Make, what's a switch that a turns switch? it? Yeah, it turns a semi-automatic into a fully a fully automatic. Is for that, what well, I, that, well, that's a bump stock for one thing, which uh, they've. Oh. Uh, They've allowed to stay legal thanks to uh, you know okay. the, the okay. courts. I didn't know that was the same. Okay, you were saying, John. I'm sorry. Um, I've lost track, but I did just run across an interesting headline. It says oh. Trump says Biden could never take the fifth as many times as he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's from Andy Borowitz at the New Yorker. Oh, okay. Well, that <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> But that does have a ring of truth there. But uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that clip I played at the beginning of uh, Trump taking the saying, taking the fifth is you, you're, you're, you're guilty if you do that. You know, that's what the mob bosses do. He's like, well, I guess yeah, you're yeah, a mob yeah. boss now, buddy. It's all projection. It will always be projection. That's just I mean, if they say that we're pedophiles, you can guarantee Matt Gates is somewhere, you know, or Roy Moore. I mean yeah. that it's just it's they throw stuff at us just to, it's like the kid on, at school when you're a kid you know on the playground and they're like hey everybody look at her she's fat and it's so you know you know you don't notice that you've got you know a ringworm <laughs> yeah apparently why do you, why do there you are still people this... stalking the pizza parlor in washington dc I know. Well, like... why do you think this idea that democrats are pedophiles i mean why specifically that because it's what the republicans are i mean i think that's a projection i really do think about it i mean all the people that have been like roy moore Matt i believe Gaines, that there are pedophiles on both sides i do yeah. too i believe that too but i think for some reason they're trying to weaponize it by throwing it at us first and i am willing to say fuck bill clinton I can't even believe, I mean, for many reasons, but God, anybody God, who is on that island or on that fucking plane who tells me they don't know that what Lolita means mm -hmm. makes me sick. How dare you? Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't want to fuck Bill Clinton. I mean, person, oh. personally, I, I have scruples, you know, just, just a couple of them. But, uh. I don't think she wanted to. I think she won. She, uh, I don't know, maybe. I think it was more of a presidential thing than. Grooming is the word on. that they use, isn't it? They talk about yes. grooming. Well, yes. when I was growing grooming. up, grooming was what you did with your hair, and you had nice exactly. makeup, and uh, you dressed nice. That, that it's hard to say you're taking your grooming. dog to get groomed. <laughs> it is. It's a weird thing to say. Oh, I'm. I'm it's also. Man. I mean, they use that with LGBTQ people. They say that they're grooming kids to be gay, mm -hmm. and the idea is that you know you're not born gay. Um, you have to be taught to be gay. Yeah, you yeah. have to sign and, up. And there's a legion of people who are ready to teach you. That's my. That's my agenda. Yes, I. There that's, you are. I I have to check in next week to see what my quota is. <laughs> I just I just do cold calls at this point. I'm just too old. <laughs> you're, not doing the, you're not like the fuller brush man uh, who would go to door to door. Uh, ah, that's for the hey, youngsters. Can I, can I interest you in new sexual mores? Uh? <laughs> can I interest you in 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 gay? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I think all the, you know, I think all the kids right now are not all of them, but a good majority of them are feeling comfortable, at least at school, maybe to, 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 to kind of be more authentic than we ever felt we could, but I could be wrong. I'm not a kid in school right now either. I mean, it, it just seems like from the movies I watch, 
Well, I liked what you, when we were talking before we went live here, you were talking about uh, the usage of queer. And I was mm. fascinated. I thought that was a very astute observation on your part. <clears throat> oh, well, thank you. I, <clears throat> I was just making the point that I think that taking back the Brandon thing, the let's go Brandon and turning it into dark Brandon, I don't really, um, I mean, I get the intent because whereas like in the LGBTQIAA, I don't know them all, but the Q I think should be enough. And I think it is, you can say you're queer and just leave it at that. And if you want to get down into it, you know, that's fine, but you're in the, you're under the umbrella of queer. Um, and I think that there are, um, there are too many flags also. <laughs> no problem with all the flags. Oh, you'd think, rather have umbrellas than flags. Well, I, th no, I like, I like flags. I have, I think that the original gay flag is the flag we should use. And then like state flags, you can have your what, trans. What does and, the original gay flag look like? It's just rainbows. And now there's, it's just a rainbow. And now they've added a black stripe and a white stripe to include like brown and, and black skinned people. And they've also included a, a sort of a chevron of baby blue and pink and white to represent the trans community. That's the original and each one of those colors has a specific meaning and also you can use any of those colors to make any of the colors that they've added <laughs> well you, you know if you look at how color works you could use combinations of those colors to make other colors exactly that's a very that's, inclusive you know, theory there that's the whole point and in my opinion by adding the chevrons of the trans people and adding the black and the brown lines adding L, G, B, T, I, A, whatever, it is breaking us apart as a community. It is not bringing us together. We do not rally under one flag and say, we are queer. It's none of your business, what kind of queer? And if, you know, we'll tell you later or we'll retire to our own state flags or whatever, but we all come together united as queers. <laughs> so what do you think about pronouns? Um, hey man, I'm, I'm all about respect. People want to give me their pronouns. I'm fine with that. I, I, if somebody wants to know mine, absolutely. I'll call you whatever you want to be called. I, I respect who you are and I, I have no, I've got nothing against anyone. I, you know, except for, you know, Trump. Well, <laughs> you can call me anything you want to. You just don't call me late for happy hours. Mm. So, uh, I would never, ever do that never, to you. Never, never. You know, uh, John said, uh, mentioned uh, uh, an umbrella being used. And one of my favorite uh, happy hour bars had a nice umbrella that went on the drink that was in the colors, the, the correct ones. That's and nice. Found out that the bartender was, you know, was gay and uh, thought that was just a nice way to dress people up. <laughs> well, I would like to give a shout out to my fabulous gay waiter today at Kirby Lane this morning. His name is Thor and he's wonderful. And Thor. I asked, I said, he said, yes, it's Thor. Actually, Does he have, have a hammer? Uh, see, I said, I bet you've never heard this one. Where's your hammer? And he was like, <laughs> okay, you know where the kitchen is. <laughs> <laughs> turned and walked off it was so funny he was adorable so yeah um i was just wondering if that was a nickname no that's his name and he said i've been getting shit my whole life for it i mean i it's a rough it's a rough name Dave. that's a bad name man <laughs> and it's a hard I, you know even I, for a gay guy <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a you know, uh, apparently a, it's a popular Scandinavian name for children. I encountered a guy on tour uh, back in the day. Uh, his name was Thor. He's still around. He's a production manager and lighting guy, and uh, huh. he, he, and he, you know, he had a you know Scandinavian. I think he was like uh, you know Norwegian, 
and uh, his background anyway. And uh, yeah. so there, there are some Thors out there, Hammerless, of course. Uh, not uh, not very many <laughs> Texans with a Southern accent named Thor, though. <laughs> Howdy, my name's Thor. You know, that Texas accent is going away. That's one of the interesting things that I noticed some years ago. I, I remember I was driving across West Texas and I was in some little town and stopped to get I don't know, a Coke or coffee or something at a, uh, maybe a Dairy Queen or something. And uh, the the server, uh, the person who was like taking my order was, was uh, a woman and she spoke kind of like a valley girl. Okay. And I, I realized that this is kind of what's happened to, because of you know the yeah. the pervasiveness of mass media accents regional accents are are sort of fading away but people which is not still oh, get go a, ahead. I, I think people still get a new york accent and boston and chicago maybe i don't know i know people in new york who sound Pretty normal. We should do a show on regional accents. And that would be fun. I can I tell. I apparently them. have an accent. People say I have an accent. I, I do too, y'all. Discern it. Yep, well, we've got a minute sure. left. Y'all think I have an girls. accent, huh? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, apparently, when I drank, I used to have me one, but I'm yeah. right now. Well, y'all, we have a minute left. We're going to have to leave, but I think we need to continue along the way of uh, having fun like this every thursday i think right we on. Too. who's on next week be joy go swami Woo! All, all right. right all right so here we go i will see you guys next week right on good night y'all okay this was fun adios adios night night you can follow the plutopia news network at plutopia.io on Facebook, go to at Plutopia News. On Twitter, it's at Plutopia. This is the Plutopia News Network, 20 minutes into the future.